Okay, the next thing we're going to cover is the horizontal stabilizer. Um, this is the end piece here, um, or what it looks like when it's finished anyway. Um, pretty straightforward. Um, I kind of showed a little bit on the first video, but um, it pretty much comes assembled straight out of the box. Um, pretty much what you have to do is uh, sand the leading edge to shape and um, put the uh, 30 second inch ply um, end pieces here, here, and here. Um, before you do any gluing on the uh, root piece of the um, plywood cap there, um, you have to assemble this torque rod. Um, the pe individual pieces kind of look like this. There's a torque rod. That, um, you don't have to build that cross piece there. It just comes just like that. Um, there's a flat piece so that you can uh, mount it into the plane. Um, this was a block that you have to sand to shape. Um, just basically you follow the shape of the airfoil inside the hole there. And that'll go in here. You can kind of see where the uh, crossbar piece um, kind of makes those indentations there. Um, so basically, sand this to shape. That goes in there. This goes in here. You want to make sure that that uh, flat piece um, faces uh, downward because uh, that's where the set screws are. Um, that'll go inside there. All right, and I forgot to bring it, but the uh, I have a pre-cut. 30 second inch ply cap that goes over the top. So basically what will happen is um, you put 30 minute epoxy uh, inside the hole all around the tube. Um, not not here but where, where it goes into the mounting block there. Um, you mount it to the fuselage because you want to make sure that uh, the angle of the left and right side are the same. They kind of droop down um, but you want to make sure it's the same angle in uh, comparison to the wing. Um, before you do all your final gluing. So anyways, um, I did that last night with this one. This one's ready to be fiberglassed, so I think I'm going to do that today. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and glass our uh, horizontal stab. Um, I've got three quarter ounce uh, cloth that I've already pre-cut to shape. Um, I'm not going to claim to be an expert in this area, but uh, anyways, I'm using um, Z epoxy. Um, I've already got that all mixed up, ready to go. Just a 50/50 solution in this little cup. Um, basically, that's going to be way more than enough than what we need. Um, one lesson that I learned from doing the last one is um, I tried to do the last one all in one sheet that covered the front and the back. Um, about the time I got to the back, it was already starting to set up, and it was just kind of a, a hassle. So. Um, on this one, I'm just going to do one side at a time. So um, basically, I'm just going to use an old uh, driver's license. This one's my wife's. Um, and we're going to coat the wood. All right. And like I said, that's going to be way more than enough. We're just going to evenly coat the place our cloth. And I'm just trying to get it as flat as possible. We'll have to get all the wrinkles and stuff out here as we move along. A lot 
bit easier for you to get those out first. Okay. And we're just going to work from the middle out. You can see that uh, the um, Z epoxy that we already have on there, it's soaked into the wood and it actually soaks into the um, fiberglass here really well too. So you really don't have to go gangbusters on it. One thing though that I did notice, I had a heck of a lot easier time um, on my wing. I did one side, or I'm sorry, the other vertical stab that I did, I did one side where I um, only did one coat of the Z epoxy and sanded it smooth and anyways the weave showed through a lot more. Um, the other side where I did a second coat of Z epoxy, just a real light coat afterwards and then sanded that down. That one was like mirror finish when I uh, went ahead and primed it. So I think I'm going to do that on this as well. I don't think the weight will be too bad on it. Um, if I have to, I'll just compensate by putting in um, mid-size servos instead of full-size servos. So that's how we're going to compensate on that. Um, the other thing that you want to make sure is that the resin soaks in past your outline there. Um, that makes it easier to uh, cut the fiberglass leaf. Okay, that is pretty much it. I'm gonna just pull it tight there and get this last little corner. Okay, now I'm not sure if you can see this or not. If you can see the, uh, you can just barely see the weave in there. And we're gonna have to go through and, like I said, put another second coat in after this sets up a little bit. And that'll make it a lot easier to get a smooth finish. So I'm gonna let that uh, dry and I'll get on to the next step. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do, uh, this is dry now. Um, I'm going to trim off the excess. It'll trim real easy if you uh, make the epoxy go over the edge there. Um, that way you don't get any frays or anything like that. And then the nice thing is, is any that's left over that you can't get with your X-Acto knife, you can just sand right off. Alright, so this edge here didn't quite uh, go far enough and you can kind of see it uh, it'll fray a little bit. Um, I'll be able to sand it um, where the uh, epoxy is. I'll sand right to that point and kind of feather that edge. Then when I put the other side on um, I'll just kind of feather it uh, onto that leading edge there. So it's not a big deal. It's just a little bit nicer if you get the epoxy to uh, absorb past your edge there. So. Anyways, that's that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and sand it and then I'm going to do the other side.